When I think of basketball, there are two things that first pop into my mind. The first, Space Jam, and the close second is Slam Dunk. Slam Dunk, one of the biggest sports manga and anime of all time. And I believe that it has changed the scope of basketball in Japan forever. In America in 1976, the NBA absorbed the smaller competition league, the ABA, and became the NBA we know today. And in 1980, Magic Johnson led the Los Angeles Lakers to a championship victory in his rookie year. It was the beginning of a dramatic new age for basketball, a decade which saw some of the most internationally acclaimed players of the game rise to legendary status. Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, Moses Malone, I could go on, but I won't. Our story starts halfway across the world in Japan, where basketball wasn't just unpopular, it was virtually unheard of. International broadcast sports were rare, there still are. Licensing fees for rebroadcasting sports events from abroad were expensive, and most people in Japan only got public TV channels. This was a world without the internet. Remember watching anime on fan sub video cassette tapes, or reading about the latest series in an expensive anime news magazine, or ordering overseas for authentic merchandise only to wait several months and not get the package because it got lost by the postal service? You have to imagine that being a fan of a largely Western sports craze when you were growing up in Japan was kind of like that. However, the sports of basketball have been around in Japan since at least the 1930s when the first Japanese basketball league was formed, and many schools in Japan had indoor gymnasiums that could be used for sports in all seasons, and basketball was a common team sport for youth. In 1990, millions of kids were already playing basketball for school teams across Japan. So while not many people followed professional basketball, quite a few teens in the 80s would have played it. One such kid was Takehiko Inoue who started playing basketball in high school purely to impress girls, but he fell in love with the game itself and became a basketball superfan. Inoue was a fan of sports manga and also liked to draw. His two passions, basketball and manga, would eventually lead him to create the internationally legendary manga, Slam Dunk. As Inoue was becoming a basketball fan in Japan, the NBA was thriving in the US. Inoue's favorite NBA team was the Los Angeles Lakers, nicknamed Showtime, the team of living legends Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Magic Johnson himself. The Lakers played an exceptionally fast-paced, exciting, run-and-gun style of basketball and won five championships within a nine-year span during the 80s. Inoue was already a working manga artist in 1990, but had not yet drawn his own original series. He started writing a story about a high school basketball player, a punk who started playing basketball to impress a girl he liked. Sound familiar? Slam Dunk, the manga, debuted in Weekly Shonen Jump in October 1990. The hero character Sakuragi had a striking red hair and a bad attitude. But really, he was just a normal hot-blooded teenage boy whose heart desire was to date Haruka-san, the cutest girl in school who also loved basketball. To win her heart, Sakuragi declared that he'd become the greatest basketball player. Slam Dunk wasn't just the first basketball manga to be popular, it was the very first published manga about basketball, ever. Oh hey, hey, just to let y'all know, uh, that information back there is actually wrong. Slam Dunk was not the first basketball manga ever. It's actually given to Dear Boys, a sports manga by Hiroki Yagami, published by Kodansha in Monthly Shonen Magazine. And its original run started in 16th December, 1989, a whopping one year before Slam Dunk was ever made. So uh, yeah, just as, a, just as a fact check. Just to let y'all know. Allegedly, Inoue's editor even warned him away from the subject, saying basketball was a taboo in this world. Inoue was charting unknown territory, and it's testament to its skill as an artist that Slam Dunk was given the green light at all. No one could have predicted that a manga about basketball would become so popular. So why was it popular? Sakuragi is not the typical sports manga hero. He gets into fights, antagonizes everyone in the world except his beloved Haruka-san, and has no patience or respect for learning how to actually play basketball. But his chaotic energy and bullheaded stubbornness endear him to the serious team captain, Akagi. Sakuragi's narrative journey go from thinking basketball is stupid to loving it with all his heart. He draws the readers in as we hope for this anti-hero to win against all those who would write him off as a useless troublemaker. 
To the knowledgeable basketball fans, Slam Dunk's characters make many direct and indirect references to the NBA, which in a way would have followed closely from magazines and rare broadcasts. Some fans compare Sakuragi's playstyle and character appearance to the NBA player Dennis the Worm Rodman, a genius with no respect for the rules. Both play the power forward position, have flashy appearances, and wear the jersey number 10. By the same logic, Sakuragi's rival, Rukawa, can be compared to Michael Jordan. Criticized for being arrogant and undoubtedly a basketball prodigy, both Jordan and Rukawa even wore a black armband. Though if we do want to get technical, Jordan was a shooting guard and Rukawa was a small forward. The captain Akagi is a doppelganger for Patrick Ewing and playing the same position, which is center. Now I and most non-basketball fans didn't know these facts, but in a way, added them anyway. He was creating the story firstly and most importantly for himself. He was also creating a bridge for new fans to find these connections later as they waded into basketball, and for basketball fans who would later find Slam Dunk and become fans of manga through it. Slam Dunk immediately enthralled the Shonen Jump audience, which already had a weekly readership of over 2 million people, thanks to popular series like Dragon Ball that was also running in it. Young readers would write to him that they started playing basketball after reading Slam Dunk. So Inoue was inspired and encouraged by this, to keep pushing himself to make basketball game details even more realistic and exciting. Even if readers of Slam Dunk had no other access to news and knowledge about basketball, they could come to love it and learn it through Slam Dunk. What set Slam Dunk apart from a lot of previous sports manga was his anarchic humor. Born from a genuine love of the game, Sakurai plays a prototypical fool character constantly disrupting gameplay, antagonizing his own teammates, the coaches, and his friends. He actively works to thwart the plan from moving forward smoothly, which is both frustrating and entertaining. The humor of Slam Dunk also pokes fun at the hypocrisy of sports culture. The idolization of players as mythological heroes, of the game itself as a romantic ideal, he perfectly captures the feeling of playing sports as a youth. Not just the hard work and dedication, but the freedom, absurdity, and enjoyment that comes with it. It was the same art style which helped Slam Dunk appeal to fans of all ages and genders. Slam Dunk sparked a large female following. Its two central characters, Sakuragi and Rukawa, with their intense and often violent rivalry, were both very handsome and beautifully drawn. Their story, as much as the story of Sakuragi's crush in Haruko-san, kept fans enthralled. Their rivalry burned slowly into a subtle mutual respect and trust. Successful manga artist Chika Umino, creator of Honey and Clover, and Yamane Yano, creator of Crimson Spell, Finder, and All Round Yaoi Queen, among many others, cut their teeth in the 90s dojinchi scene, drawing slam dunk fan books. Whether you're a kid still figuring out teammate dynamic or a young adult yearning for a relationship built on equal grounds, the story reaches beyond the sport. Slam dunk is a story about love. Fun fact, Inoue requested in an artist corner in the second chapter of Slam Dunk for readers to send in lost love songs for Sakuragi. It was a fun little joke request for readers to contact him, but he wrote later in an afterword in chapter 10, only eight weeks later, that he received an overwhelming amount of letters and fan written songs. Those, they, they sure do love Sakuragi. While Slam Dunk were just getting started in Japan, over in America, the NBA was revving up for another spectacular decade on the backdrop of global shift towards open communication and commerce. 1990 was the perfect time to come into the NBA fandom. In November of 1990, the NBA became the first sports league to host any of its regular season games internationally, bringing the Utah Jazz and Phoenix Suns to Tokyo, Japan for two games. From what I can tell from the packed stadium, the games went over well with Japanese viewers. During the 90-91 to 91 season, the Chicago Bulls with their star shooting guard, Michael Jordan, started to really get things going. The Bulls defeated the Lakers in the final round of the playoffs and claimed their very first franchise league title in 1991. They would go to win the championship in 92 and 93 for an unprecedented three-peat, the first in the NBA since 1966. 1991 was also the year Magic Johnson, one of the greatest basketball players of all time, abruptly retired from the NBA due to contracting HIV in the midst of the AIDS crisis. Also, the Cold War ended in 91, and international broadcasting began to blossom. The global population's curiosity ignited for news and open communication. And the 1992 Olympics brought American basketball stars to that hungry global audience. Nicknamed the Dream Team by the press, the USA men's basketball team was deep. 
Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, and even Magic Johnson, who came out of retirement to represent his country. Guess who, uh, who won gold? Go on. Guess. USA won. The NBA returned to Japan in November 1992 for another pair of games, this time between the Supersonics and the Rockets, to a sellout crowd of 15,640 at Yokohama Arena. For context, Madison Square Garden and Staples Center hold around 20,000 seats. I can only imagine that crowd had a number of manga fans in the seats, eager for a glimpse of the players that inspired Slam Dunk. Perhaps Inoue himself was there too. The NBA returned to Japan in 94, 96, 99, and finally 2003, each time to sell out crowds of thousands. Clearly the NBA saw the potential profits to be made by selling their product to the Japanese audience, but whether they were aware it was in large part due to a manga is unclear. The Slam Dunk anime began airing on TV Asahi in 1993 and ran until 1996 for a whopping 101 episodes and spawned four made-for-TV movies. The people wanted more basketball. In 1994, NBA Weekly, a half-hour sports news show, began airing on TV Tokyo on Sundays. By spring 1995, NHKBS showed an average of two games per week during the NBA season, and TV Asahi aired one game per month as well. It's difficult to measure Slam Dunk's exact impact on the popularity of basketball during its publication, except to say that, yes, it definitely was changing things. More and more kids were joining their junior and high school basketball teams. The number of players competing at some levels in the various schools and rec leagues grew by 1 million people between 1990 and 95. Basketball fashion became popular too. Basketball shoes, jerseys, and hairstyles were becoming ingrained in fashion across the globe. And sneakerheads obsessively collected every newly released pair of shoes on the market. Inoue even parodied sneakerheads in Slam Dunk. The owner of a shoe store where Sakuragi is shopping exclaims that he's collecting all of the Air Jordan editions. Sakuragi, of course, immediately bullies him into giving him a pair for free. Undeniably, it wasn't just basketball culture that was popular with Japanese youth but black and hip-hop culture as well. Though not mutually exclusive, basketball and hip-hop culture, which both heralded many black American superstars, had a strong impact on Japanese youth fashion, music, and pop culture in the late 80s and early 90s. Inoue worked this aesthetic into his character designs. Captain Akai sports the same signature haircut as his NBA doppelganger, Ewing, an obvious homage, and many of the characters sport hip-hop style street clothes and hairstyles. The 90s was the golden age of Japanese street fashion, and Slam Dunk helped elevate basketball fashion into Japanese popular culture. The traditional sports manga hero comes from humble beginnings, and often starts playing the game accidentally or unexpectedly. They act as our inroad to understanding the sports itself, but they almost always have a goodness that endears them to the team and sets them apart from selfish or bully type characters. Their sport is a tool for spreading goodwill, converting people to be their followers. The choice between playing and quitting is easy. Their life is better, less challenging, and more fulfilling through playing the game. It is a seductive dream, one that any sports fan know too well. If you have talent, your journey to victory set in the stars, rising forever, never having to return to solid ground. But the Shohoku team have the odds stacked against them. Despite the team captain Sakagi's dream of winning a championship, their team struggles. Yes, they began to miraculously rise from obscurity as our protagonist improves his skills, but the characters of Slam Dunk are often burdened by reality. Bad grades, school fights, health concerns, and even crippling injury. Despite it all, the Shohoku team improves in breakneck speed. In one short season, they qualify for the National Inner High Championship for the first time in six years. The final anime episode ends with them boarding the train to the tournament, determined to win. Inoue had been a player too, and probably understood the duality of escapism and oversimplification of the sports narrative, and the realities of the sacrifice that goes into training and holding a team together. He weaves this question into his story, the question becoming the climax of the manga series. Even if the game takes everything from you and gives you nothing back, do you still love basketball? In the 95-96 NBA season, the Chicago Bulls with a freshly unretired Michael Jordan traded for the bad boy Dennis Rodman mid-season. Jordan and Rodman, who notoriously didn't get along off the court, 
remind you of anyone? Nonetheless, they played beautifully together, and the Bulls won an unprecedented 72 games out of 82, the most of any NBA team in history. They claimed the championship after a dramatic playoff series. In a way, to a slam dunk fan, it must have seemed like life imitating art. The Bulls hoisted the championship trophy on June 16, 1996, and Slam Dunk released its final chapter on June 17, 1996. What a coinky dink. Slam Dunk is a king of manga. The collective volumes have sold over 170 million copies in Japan alone. It's still one of the best selling manga in Japanese history, behind only a handful of classics like One Piece, Dragon Ball, and Naruto. Many basketball fans today, all over the world, contribute their first introduction to basketball to reading Slam Dunk. And the manga is still popular among young readers today, continuing to inspire readers to love both manga and basketball. Love of basketball in Japan has grown since Slam Dunk, but still has far to go. In 2006, Inoue and his publisher founded the Slam Dunk Scholarship, a basketball scholarship that would pay for a Japanese student to attend school in America and play for an American high school team, opening up the possibility for them to be drafted to the NCAA, aka College Basketball League. Inoue has stated that he hoped that this scholarship would help continue to enrich the basketball culture in Japan by giving young basketball players a dream to shoot for. While fandom for the NBA has thrived since the early 90s, Japan has struggled to form a unified and successful professional basketball league of its own. The JBL was the only basketball league in Japan until 2005, when the BJ League was formed as a competitor. FIBA, the International Basketball Association, locked Japan out of international competitions in 2012 until it could merge the two leagues. In 2015, the B League was announced, merging teams from both leagues. The B League launched in 2016 and today hosts 36 teams with a robust season of 60 games. Their roster are a mix of local talent and American immigrants. One such transplant is J.R. Sakuragi of the Asin Seahorses, formerly J.R. Henderson, who changed his name to apply for a Japanese citizenship so he could play for the Japanese national team. But did Sakuragi change his name to emulate the hero of Slam Dunk? No, he says humbly. It was just a coincidence. But perhaps just such a coincidence that might entice manga fans to take notice. Team Japan and the B-League may be fledging, but they are a world apart from a non-existent basketball culture of Japan in the 80s. And Slam Dunk is still selling copies, drawing new fans in. In the final game of the manga series, Sakuragi injures his back and faces the possibility that he might not be able to play again, ever. But he stubbornly refuses to quit. A fool to the very end, he rejoins the game and helps his team to an upstart victory. The team takes a group photo before heading to their final game, which we never see. All we get is a postscript explaining that after such an exhaustive victory, their team would go on to be defeated in the final game and return home without the trophy. The epilogue is a letter written from Haruko-san to Sakuragi, who is away from school recovering from his injury. Haruko writes that Rukawa has been drafted into Japan's dream team, but besides him, everyone else has continued on with ordinary life. Sakuragi and Haruko do not get together. The ending of Slam Dunk was sudden and atypical for such a long-running and beloved series. Basically, we're left unsatisfied. Slam Dunk is itself a sports anime. No, I mean, I know it's an anime about sports. I mean, it's, it's like the hero of sports anime. Slam Dunk is Sakuragi. It showed up, fresh, irrelevant, full of energy, and with a simple desire to be loved. Slam Dunk is also Akagi, who loved basketball with all its heart. And that pure love for the sport above all else was its strength. Inoue himself has compared his manga to a living being. It began as a very personal project created against the advice of so many, but it kept fighting. It grew along with his characters. The reason Slam Dunk is so popular isn't because Inoue accurately presented the game of basketball. In fact, it stretched a lot of the facts. In what game do high school games sell out in full arenas, and why are his three-point shots always wide open? But what shone through was his earnest love for the game. He chose to do something different, something he personally was passionate about. Why did Inoue end the series when he did? Why so suddenly? Captain Akagi graduated without ever winning a championship, and Sakuragi's back injury was still healing in the short epilogue. Will he ever play again? That is left up to us, the reader. 
Do we believe Sakuragi will find his way back to basketball and achieve greatness? Or do we accept the final loss, the heartbreak, and move on? The slam dunk anime ends after the defeat Shoho Ryonen before the inner high tournament. Inoue has even said that he had thought about quitting manga after he finished slam dunk, but he did something courageous. By leaving behind the project that had garnered so much acclaim, setting himself loose when so many other shonen manga creators would hang on to one series for decades. When Slam Dunk stopped running in 96, sales for Shonen Jump Weekly plummeted. This is in part due to Dragon Ball's ending, its serialization in that same year. Numbers for people playing basketball in school also dropped to about 200,000 after 96, but would hold remarkably steady throughout the 2000s. Despite Inoue forcibly moving career towards other projects, the impact of Slam Dunk would hold strong. Inoue began traveling around the world, even living in LA for a year, near his beloved Lakers. He has stated in an interview how impressed he was with sports culture in the US, that top players have responsibilities in the society and are respected, and that in the US, sports fandom was just the way of life. Unlike Japan, where even in 2006, it was still most common for Japanese youth to only play sports in high school and forget about the game after graduating. After Slam Dunk, Inoue began drawing Buzzer Beater, another basketball story, but this time with a sci-fi twist. Then he created Vagabond, a critically acclaimed manga about the legendary samurai Miyamoto Musashi. And lastly, Real, a sign of manga about the sports of wheelchair basketball and the stories of the people involved all of them containing the passion that Inoue has for the exploration of humanity, life, tragedy, and for buzzer beater and real, the love of basketball. All themes I believe he began exploring with Slam Dunk. Maybe Slam Dunk turned people on to basketball, but it was the story of Slam Dunk that people kept coming back for. Without the narrative, sports is just a game. Inoue tells the story about the love of sports, to accept the wins, with the losses. No victory set in stone and no star's rise is guaranteed. To be a true sports fan, one must choose to love the game anyway.